Good evening, brothers and sisters. It's time for another installment of the Vladcast program, where you get all the news about what's happening at St. Vladimir Parish in Ann Arbor, Dexter, Michigan. And we have a very special program today. It's about April, and April this year means Pascha and other important church holidays and goings on. I'm your host, John Hill, and I'm here today with a very special guest, Father Gregory Joyce, rector of St. Vladimir Parish in Ann Arbor, Dexter. John, very glad to have you here today. I like, I like our new studio. Yes, we're uh, coming to you uh, taping from the island of Patmos in the Aegean Sea. That's the tropical uh, foliage that you see, or Mediterranean, yes. as it were. Okay, well, without further ado, Father, Good. Um, the most important thing about Pascha is parking for Pascha. Do we got that covered this year? I think so. I mean, we're gonna, we sent out some information about Palm Sunday, special instructions for St. Vladimir's parishioners, and I hope people have had a look at that. Um, and also we'll what kind of instructions? In, um, that everyone should move to the front of the church so that the guests who are going to be a little shy will stand in the back. That's where they're going to want to be anyway. Well, I think the Brotherhood has that under control just yep. like the parking. Yep, not to, park, have... not to park in the guest spots. So yes. Please, please. Um, yeah, so that, that sort of thing. And uh, the other thing is for both Pascha and, uh, and uh, for Palm Sunday, we'll for sure have two chalices, maybe, maybe more if we have another priest, we'll have three chalices. So please go to the shortest line. How many chalices uh, does the church own, or can you like just turn anything in, anything into a chalice? No, well, I mean, no, not really. It's it got to be blessed. Yes, there's a special blessing for it. There's a prayer. Yeah, uh -huh. there's a special. Prayer. You know where to find that prayer? Mm -hmm. It's in the special book. Triabnik. Yes, that's right. Book of Needs. What page? Uh, that one, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, sorry, that's that's a little too much. But uh, we have several. So we'll be okay for, for the feasts, mm -hmm. God willing. Um, but it is really helpful for those who are regular parishioners to move forward and to not park in the guest spots. If we can do that, we're already doing great. Move forward in the church, move yes. up to the altar. Yeah, we'll put out those little stanchions so that people, you know, there's still room to do an entrance and so on and so forth. But we want to utilize the space that we have to the greatest extent possible. No need to be afraid of the front no. of the church. No, Just not move ahead. That's right. Milo always used to say, you know, there's more grace in the front. It's not true, but he used to always say that. Milo, our beloved founder. That's right. He used to always say that. It's not true, but he would use that as a little joke to get people to move forward. And well, he was Serbs are, are known to be leg pullers. And, yes, they and are. Kidders. Yes, they are. Okay, but we miss him. We do. We do. Okay, so we got Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm. And before that, St. Patrick, who was an Orthodox saint. A very important As Orthodox well as saint. an yes. Irish saint, although not an Irish person. He Correct. came from... Where did he come from? Well... He came from Britain directly, but there's some evidence, some new evidence that seems he was to Russian. point to the fact... No, not Russian. Uh, I don't think that the Russians were Christians at that point. Um, he, he may have come from the Middle East somewhere. Hmm. So that's... I, I read an article about that a couple of years ago. Where did I read that? Maybe a biblical archaeology or something like that. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. So it's not, it's not a for sure thing, but that, that's pretty interesting. All right, and we celebrate St. Patrick. We do, we do, on the 30th of, of March, because that's the 17th, right? 30 minus 13, that's the difference between the civil calendar and the, and the church calendar, and we'll celebrate on the, on the 30th. That's the last pre-sanctified of Great Lent. We'll be on that day. Okay. Yeah, so we'll have, great. We'll have, uh, you'll mention St. Patrick. We will, we'll, we will. The, some <clears throat> of the prayers that day will be <clears throat> to St. Patrick. There are even some folks of Irish extraction in our parish. There are actually quite a few. Father Gregory Joyce. That's one. That's one. Father Moses McPherson. Maybe well, that's one. he's a Scot. Well, well, maybe an Irish Scot. It's not clear. Scots, yeah, it's not clear. But in any case, uh, right, something like that. But uh, we do have quite a few Irish and a lot of people, a lot of... Ireland was the place before Russia where Orthodox monasticism just flowered. Just flowered. And so it's it's very very interesting um, as we learn more about orthodoxy in Ireland. They were, for instance, m many people don't know this, that the faith was brought to them from the east, not from Rome. 
because it was the trade routes that brought Christianity to them. And if you look at the way that they built their ancient churches, exactly the same way the Greeks built theirs at that time. No kidding. Yeah, isn't that interesting? We're going to bring them back to Orthodoxy, too. God willing. Just saying. God willing. Okay. All right. Um, so the 30th, uh, how does the 30th this year figure in the movable system? You know, it's really interesting. The morning is Great Lent. The evening, when the sun goes down, is Holy Week. Holy. Because uh, it was... If you recall, when we read the life of St. Mary last week, recently, um, the monks would return from the desert uh, in time for the Matins of, of Lazarus Saturday. In the Russian church, that's done on Friday night rather than Saturday morning before liturgy. But in any case, we will liturgically start Holy Week at 6 o'clock on Friday evening. So Holy Week is coming fast. This Friday? This Friday, just wow. a few days from now. Um, so Lazarus... The services for Lazarus Saturday begin Holy Week. So that's that's soon. and that's Liturgy great. Saturday. Yep, Liturgy Saturday. Yes. That's the confession and communion of all the church school kids. We want to try to get all those confessions out of the way so that they will um, just practically, we ask people to only confess once at this time of year, um, which motivates a subset of people to confess 7 to 12 times. But... We hope that people will will just. They probably forget. They probably remember something important. And I understand. I'm not. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying there's a subset of people that confess more often now. But we really want people to confess less less often, um, just because it's not practical for two priests to, to handle all those confessions. But in any case, it's all good. And uh, thank God, we are just about done with Great Lent and ready to go to Holy Week. Here we come. Yep, that's ready right. Ready or not. Mm -hmm. And the Saturday liturgy is. It's St. Lazarus's day. He's a saint, and that's his day? You know, it's actually not his, his commemoration. There's another date, and I don't recall when it is. It's, I think it's also in April, but later in the, in the, in the month. Um, he, we are commemorating the resurrection of Lazarus on that day. And it's, an, it's a really interesting weekend, too, because this is the one time that you celebrate the resurrection, not on Sunday. Right, because Palm Sunday is not about the resurrection. No. Palm Sunday is about the entrance into Jerusalem. But the resurrection of Lazarus is about a resurrection. Exactly. But it's very interesting that some of the resurrectional parts mm -hmm. that are usually sung on Saturday night or Sunday morning appear in the Lazarus uh, liturgical cycle. So it's really quite an interesting one. Um, what's also interesting to people, uh, well, I hope will be interesting to people, um, this weekend, this uh, Palm Sunday weekend, the Saturday night vigil is the shortest of the whole year. It's the shortest of the whole year. It's a very important one. It's a big feast, and it's short. What makes so, it short? No canon? Well, or? there is a canon, but we have the practice of not repeating the verses in the canon. Uh, we just read them once, even if it says to repeat them. So um, it just turns out to be short. Is that just for Lazarus? Uh, no, we do that uh, any, any, basically any time. Uh, if it says to repeat it, we, just, we don't repeat it, and that's how we slightly shorten the services but keep the same structure. In any case, this, this particular canon only has a few verses and it says to repeat them, you know, 14 times or something like that. Okay. We don't do that. Uh, and so that shortens it. So if you haven't been to vigil, this is the time. This is the time to if go. If you're scared of long services. Right. This would be a really good time to introduce yourself and your family to, to vigil on Saturday night. And it's, it's a real, uh, generally uh, prayerful Kind of solemn, but mm -hmm. uh, but very deep sort of experience. I like it that the lights aren't on. Yes, me too. It is definitely different than Divine Liturgy. It's also really a teaching service. There's just so much that you learn when you come to the evening services. Because the evening services, about, well, 75% of the, the services are different each week. Whereas Liturgy, about 75% is not different each week. Liturgy is the most significant theologically, but as far as educationally, the evening services are more Doesn't change much. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that's <clears throat> Saturday morning liturgy, mm -hmm. and then back for a Palm Sunday vigil? Yep, that's right. But that's not the shortest one. The Friday one is no, the shortest No, the Saturday night. The Palm oh, the Sunday Sat one is the really Palm short Sunday one. one is the yeah, and in fact, after liturgy on Saturday, I forgot to say, we'll prepare the palms and the pussy willows, uh, and they're given out at vigil which is also a good reason to come to Vigil, because there is a limited amount, and there's always a lot of people. Um, so you come to Vigil, you're going to get your pick of the... But you do have to remember to bring it back. You have to remember to bring it back. Sunday morning. Keeping it in the car is not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. All right. So then liturgy, that's not about the resurrection, mm -hmm. on Sunday, Palm Correct. Sunday. Yep. 
Are we coming back to church Sunday yes. evening? That's right. We, we begin the uh, bridegroom matins uh, kind of cycle, which is the first half of Holy Week. So the evening will be matins. I know that sounds funny. The evening is the morning service, but that's just the way it has. To, there's, there's no other way to really do this. So the bridegroom uh, is coming. You better not be asleep, and you better have some juice for your lamp. That's right. You better have oil. Um, you can see John is referring to the to the gospel. A narrative, the parable about the, the ten virgins. And the reason that it's called bridegroom matins is that there's a an ex apostolarian, which is one of the best words in Orthodoxy, I have to say, ex apostolarian, that's sung uh, at each of these bridegroom matins, which is, Behold the bridegroom cometh at midnight. Um, and there's more to it than that's that. That's from the Gospels. It's from the Gospels, yeah. yeah. I like dogmaticon, that's a good word too. Yeah, it's a good one too. That's a good one too. All right. Yeah. Um, so we got these, th and then uh, Monday. Yeah, so the last, the last three um, pre-sanctifieds of the year happen in Holy Week, the first three days of Holy okay. Week. Okay, those are bridegroom uh, well, pre-sanctified? Yeah, or? I mean, you don't really call it that, but it is, it, it's, it's connected to that bridegroom service that was done in the evening before, then pre-sanctified that morning. And we do that Sunday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So what's the difference between a morning pre-sanctified and one that's later on in the afternoon, like, to today, the right, 28th to, was a uh, Wednesday, right? Right. And a pre-sanctified, but it started at 5, 6. So the service itself started a little after 6. Um, it's interesting, too, because in the Tipicon, it's very laid out very clearly. Pre-sanctified liturgy begins at the ninth hour, which is about 3 o'clock. Hmm. Uh, what we do in our parish with the Bishop's Blessings, we start matins at the ninth hour. Uh, so we try to kind of keep that structure, but we just start a little bit later so that people can come after work. So it, what happens is people just trickle in over time uh, between 3 and 6 o'clock, and then the liturgy begins at 6. So you take that, that ninth hour really slow? Yeah, well... To get, like to not get through it? No, right we all do all of matins and all the hours. It's a lot, actually. Oh. We move at a good pace. Um, it's, it's really beautiful, and well, this was the last one of this great Lent. If you weren't able to go to an evening cycle of the pre-sanctified liturgy, we strongly recommend that you make sure you do that next year. Um, but yeah, it should start at the ninth hour. In our times now, we either move that to like the twelfth hour to about six o'clock, or move it earlier in the day. Mm. Neither one of those is really right, so it, it, e either one is, is deviating from the Tipicon, and so we choose to deviate in two <coughs> different ways. On Wednesday evenings, we do it in the evening, and on Friday mornings, we do it early. We start. But besides from the start time, is there anything like, well, in the evening, you do the, uh, um, oh, what's it called, the comp line, and then go into the uh, liturgy, or in the, the morning, you do a different service? No, and then the cycle's exactly the same. Uh, whether you started in the morning or the evening, the cycle's the same. And what we do in our parish, other parishes do different things. But thank God we have people who, who love the services and who come and who participate. So we're able to do matins, then all of the hours, typica, and then pre-sanctified. The whole sort of group together takes about four and a half to five hours, um, which is a lot. But the fact of the matter is to have the church open then and people can kind of come and go if they have to go, whatever. It's, it's really nice. Most people... Uh, get a chance to touch these services uh, during Great Lent, and these are very Great Lenten services, these pre-sanctifieds. Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning? Yep, last pre-sanctified, and the, the, the last pre-sanctifieds, and the, the one on Wednesday, this is, uh, we have a special guest here, the one on Wednesday um, <laughs> is interesting too, because at the end of it, after when it's all done, the priest turns around, goes back up at the anvil, does the, the prayer of St. Ephraim the Syrian uh, one last time, and that's the end of, of that's the end of um, of prostrations until Pentecost. The only other prostrations we do is before the Plashnitsa, but there's no um, Ephraim prayer. Yeah, there's no Ephraim prayer. There's no other prostrations. That's the end. Uh, so at the end of the twelve gospel service and the, the Holy Friday matins, many times people do prostrations. We don't stop them, but it's actually they're not done. There's no prostrations after that last pre-sanctified, except before the plush needs. That's like that's like people bowing when you bless the uh, the service to go back in after the the little entrance. Right. That's right. Because we're we're actually blessing the service. Hello, Sherlock. Thanks for thanks for joining us on Vladcast. Then Thursday. I know that Thursday. Very important because yes. it's the institution of the mystical supper. Or is that, do I have that yep, right? That's absolutely right. Okay. You're absolutely right. Uh, mystically present. That's right. This and is, then there's the foot washing too. Right. Is that foot, foot washing after? is that's after. That's after. Yeah. It's a really. It's a very 
very chock full liturgical day. You better take Thursday off. Yeah, I, I would recommend that. And Thursday Friday. and Friday are good days to have off. Um, so we start. No liturgy Friday. No liturgy, but we're not allowed. That's right. But there are three services, three divine services. Um, so Thursday night we start at six o'clock with uh, matins for Holy Friday. Again, the the way that the week sort of we has don't to be laid. Start later. Friday at six o'clock. We no, got no. something going on. Thursday. Thursday, well, even Thursday morning, we have Divine Liturgy, which is the institution of the Mystical Supper. Morning? Thursday, well, it's it's a later... It, we're going to do 10 o'clock this year. Um, it's Didn't a, it used to be at 2 o'clock? Yes, it did used to be later. And it is, according to the Tipcon, supposed to be later. It's supposed to be at about 1 or 2 o'clock. Oh, wow. um, just we haven't been able to quite swing that, so we move it a little bit later in the morning so to, give, to try to give some of that flavor of a later service. Because the way this works out... The way it should work out is you start the, the liturgy late, like 2 o'clock. Uh, by the time liturgy is done, it's Vesper liturgy, it's not a short one. By the time it's done, it's probably about 5. And you have a, a, a little breath uh, and start the service uh, when the sun goes down for the um, 12 Gospels. Right so there. you don't even expect people to go home. Well, we don't do it that way right now, but that's kind of how it's laid out in the Tipicon. Um, well, in a monastery, I mean, you don't really go home because that's where you... Right. Live anyway. Right. You are home. Yeah. So in any case, what we do is we do the liturgy a little later in the, in the morning. We'll start at 10. So we'll probably roll out of there about 1. Back for 6 o'clock for the matins for Holy Friday. And the reason we start at 6 as opposed to... So you're talking about Friday? Later. Thursday. It's Thursday night, but it's for the matins for Holy Friday. That's the 12 gospel service where we read the 12 passion Wait, gospels. Wait, which is the, the Vesper liturgy? That's Thursday morning. Uh, institution. Yes, that's the, the institution, institution of the Mystical Supper. supper. Ten o'clock to... Probably you about one. Okay. Probably about oh, one I thought you said that, that lasts about five hours. No, that one's about three. It's, okay. it's about one o'clock. Now, in cathedral parishes, the bishop then washes... There's a special uh, rite... Umovenia no. Yes, umovenia no, of the, the washing of the feet, which is a very beautiful and wonderful service. It's very, very powerful. Do all um, bishops do that? I mean, all bishops can do it. Yes, correct. That's right. Um... And so in our diocese, it's done only in Chicago. Um, so we aren't close to that, so we, aren't, we don't participate. But the flip side of that, the nice thing is that we get to have liturgy on Thursday morning, uh, as opposed to having our priests have to go to the diocesan cathedral. So there's, there's some good to that as well. Um, it's a really beautiful service, and I will post a, a link to that on our homepage. Uh, usually there's a nice video that's made in Moscow when the Patriarch does it. Um, it is a very beautiful and interesting service. Especially interesting is that if you've ever been to a hierarchical uh, divine liturgy, you know that the, the bishop does not vest himself. He, the subdeacons vest him. In this particular service, because it's stressing that Christ is a servant mm -hmm. and the bishop is playing the part of Christ, the, the subdeacons do not touch him when he unvests to wash the feet. Um, and he, he invests himself. It's really, it's a very, very powerful, beautiful service. And as he's washing the feet, the deacon or the proto-deacon is reading the gospel about when Christ washed the feet. And they, they time it in such a way that when he gets to the senior priest, the senior priest plays the part of Peter. You'll never wash my feet. Remember that part? Uh, and, hmm. and Christ says, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. And he says, well then, Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head also. It's like a little liturgical drama. It is a liturgical drama, and it's the only one that's universally done in the church now. Oh, yeah. uh, there are others. and Like uh, the furnace play. The furnace play, and there are even others besides that. Uh, in oh, no there's a, 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 the Ostiadenia na Ostiadenia. That's right. There's, a, there's one that... That does, would be good to see the bishop on a, yes, yes, on to, a donkey. To, Not the, any particular bishop, but a bishop. Yes, it would. And in fact, that was done in Novgorod pretty late into the imperial time. I don't know if it was done quite up to the revolution, but it was done there... Hmm. Pretty late, so there are, and there are even some other ones too. But those, the ones that you mentioned are the they were always the, doing cool stuff in Novgorod. Yes, that's true. Uh, that's but the the one that is universally done is the washing of the feet. Mm -hmm. So I'll post a link to that. Okay. We don't do it in our parish because yeah. we, we don't have the bishop, but it's really a great service and very powerful. So it's an investment, not a divestment. Yes, not a divestment. It's un investing, uh, and he doesn't take all of his vestments off. He takes off a good part of them and then there's a huge towel I don't know where these towels come from the bishop kind of wraps it around himself in such a way that it ties around his waist and it's still plenty long enough for him to wash the feet so anyway really beautiful really meaningful great that's Thursday that's Thursday after the liturgy oh after another liturgy. thing about the liturgy folks should try to 
take communion yes on, at the Thursday night. absolutely this is a this is one of those this is the day when Lord <clears throat> the Lord gave communion to the disciples um, in in the perfect world this is a day that we take off it's it's like one of the 12 great feasts I mean it's it's a massive feast um, and of course that's not necessarily possible for everybody to do and that's understood um, but it is really a very important day for us um, if you had to pick Thursday or Friday, which one? Friday. You could only pick really Friday. Yeah, yeah Friday. I mean, Friday okay. is just such an important day. Um, but if there was a way to get the both off, I would do that. I would do that if it's if it's possible. The this the services of this time of year are just so educational, so beautiful, so meaningful, and the choir spends so much time preparing for this. I mean, oh, they you they've can been, tell. Yeah, they've because been because they like crazy. they crack out some stuff that you've never heard. Maybe that's right. For every a whole year, year. Yeah. And or new stuff. Usually, yeah. Julia likes to do new things. A few new things every year. Uh, and our our producer Josh is is hiding over on the the side here with our executive producer Sherlock and. Um, but he doesn't hide when he's in the Kleros. That's true, he doesn't. Uh, and he's been practicing like crazy with the choir, as has my wife, and all the choir members are working really, really hard. I say that only because I think it's important for our viewers, for our parishioners, to know that uh, there's a huge investment of time they work hard. in order to make it possible for you to um, have beautiful Holy Week and Bright Week services, and we hope that you'll participate in them to Don't the greatest extent home. possible. Right. I mean, if you, if you just can't be there, listen. Listen on the on the live stream, uh, but if you can be there, of course, that's even better. Because when we're when we're present in the church for these services, we're mystically present at the events that are being uh, commemorated. We want to be at the cross of Christ when He's crucified. You know, we want to be at His grave uh, when when He is resting on on the Sabbath on the Holy Saturday. So, but I'm getting so ahead of myself. That, you are, um, but that's a, that would be a great idea to kind of match up the the gospel timeline. With the services, mm -hmm. okay. So Thursday morning is what Mystical Wednesday. Supper. When 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 was the actual Last Supper? Was Thursday evening? Yeah, it was. It was Thursday later. Okay, it, it was and not was Friday the, yet, but it was Thursday later. Yeah, but it was the eve of Passover. Correct. Okay, so yeah. that was their Passover meal. Yes, they had that for their Passover meal. Remember, the Lord sent the disciples to get to find the upper room. For, so that he could do his Passover with his disciples. Is that a, is that a Jewish thing that you want to take the highest room? No, 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 Passover? no, no. That's just that's where he sent them to a specific place. He obviously had the place in mind. Uh -huh. uh, he sent them there. They the the owner said yes, sure, please come. Probably and more private. Must be than in the dining room. Yes, there. yes. So in any case, they they were there, and that's where he for the first time came in the disciples. Okay, so Thursday evening. At St. Vladimir happens Thursday morning. Right. And this okay. is very indicative of Holy Week. We're usually about 8 to 12 hours off like that. Just because at the end, every, there's just no time. Yeah. So we, okay. we can't There's a lot stuck. happening. Yes. And you like to take time and you know, savor. Right. Or, or not, really not, experience. Right. Like not, explode the moment. And yeah, right, not right. blow through it so fast that you just mm -hmm. miss it. Okay. Yeah. Um, then after uh, the supper, he washed... The disciples' correct. feet. That's correct. And so that was later Thursday night, but at St. Vladimir, that's Thursday afternoon. It would be, yeah. It would okay. be right after liturgy, but we won't do the foot washing because we don't have a bishop, but yes. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. So we, we skip that. Mm -hmm. Then what happens in our gospel account So uh, Thursday? Then, then we get, we're getting to the Passion Gospels now. Yeah. Oh, now, Thursday evening are those Passion Gospels, correct. the 12. Correct. Now, according to the Is that a vigil? It's not strictly speaking a vigil, it's just matins, but it's a very long matins. It's a long matins. Strictly speaking, that would be done in the middle of the night, right? Uh, that service should be done beginning at probably 1 or 2 in the morning. But if we did that, it'd be you and me mm -hmm. and Josh uh, and a few other people. It's hard for people to come in the middle right, of the night. Right. So the parish practice If you're not a monk, right? you have a job or right. your parents. I remember so. very well the, the Holy Saturday uh, Matins in, in Jordanville when I was a student there, we did start them at 1 o'clock in the morning. And when the priest said, Glory to thee who has shown us the light, the sun was coming up over the horizon. I mean, it was really beautiful and powerful, but it's just very hard to do that in a parish. And so we, we pull it forward to Thursday evening. Thursday evening. Um, because when the sun goes down, it's the next day, right? So that's the way that the church counts time. Yeah. Uh, and so about the time of sunset, maybe a little before we start, but by the time we're done, the sun has gone down, and so it's Holy Friday. 
Okay. This is a service um, where people often, they hold candles during the reading of the 12 Gospels, and there's a pious tradition to bring the candle home um, and to sort of mark your, your doorway uh, with a cross made from the soot, like you would hold the go the, the candle. threshold. Yeah, the threshold. Or the lintel or whatever it is. Well, I think the lintels were the sides. Oh. I th this is in the middle. Um, so I know the lawyer would want me to tell you, do not drive with a candle in your car unless you have one of those nice little uh, lantern things. The diocesan lawyer? Um, yes. Yeah. Unless, but we have one of these little lantern things, and actually they're not that hard to find because they're kind of cachet now. You find them in, mm -hmm. you know, like Marshalls and places like that. So you can get one of those, and then you can safely bring the, the fire home and do that. Um, so if not, blow out the candle. Do not try to drive with a lit candle. Um, well, you can, you can leave it in the styrofoam cup and just put it in the, ba the lit candle in the back seat. You could. Bad idea? What Maybe not they, your best idea. What would the I don't want you to feel that. <laughs> uh, but I think that... Okay, don't do that. Yeah, but really, I mean, you can go to Marshall's and pick one of these things up for five bucks. And you, it's glass and metal and it's perfectly safe. So either do that or blow out the candle and light it when you get home. It's your salvation is fine. not going to be jeopardized not if at you all. don't not at all. mark up your doorway. Well, I mean, it's not going to be. But it also doesn't matter. You don't invalidate the the fact that you held this candle and it burned for all the gospels by blowing it out and lighting it again when you get home it, it's it's perfectly still perfectly legitimate okay so the passion the gospels thursday evening correct take us well actually all the way to uh, the burial in the tomb. Where did the, where does the the narrative stop? Well, it does actually. They, it stops with the burial. Mm -hmm. They lay him in a new tomb and they skedaddle, uh, which is not the most theological word. They go quickly as possibly they can home because uh, when the sun would go down, it would be Saturday, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a big problem for them. You can't do any work or, no, or even, even travel. Exactly. So they just very quickly put Christ in the tomb that was Joseph's, uh, Joseph of Arimathea's, uh, which happened to be a close pious there. Yes, uh, person. Yes. Who became a Christian? Yes. Or was already a Christian? Well, he was already a disciple of Christ. Um, at that time, he was a ma member of the Sanhedrin uh, and was, you know, lobbying for, for Christ. But um, yeah. what, so He was in a minority. He was in a minority. Now, both the place where Christ is crucified and the grave are under one roof. That's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Right, we we tend to think of these things as Michigan distances, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. when they took him down from the cross, then they put him in a tomb. It means they drove for twenty miles or mm -hmm. something like that. No, it was just like right there, um, and so it was very very close. Yeah, and the, the Middle East is like New England, right? There's just really something like this. Yes, exactly. Everything right is much closer. Yeah. yeah, so it's under one roof now, and it's a big roof, but it's under one roof, um, and so he's laid in the tomb, and they very quickly uh, head for. Is this where the different denominations fight for territory, or is that a different church in, in Jerusalem? Jerusalem? They don't really fight. It's it's there is a the Church of the Holy Sepulchre has an agreement between the Orthodox, the Armenians, the Catholics. There's somebody else. Anyway, I've forgotten. I'm sorry. There's a fourth. But in any case, it's uh, there is a an agreement about how it's how about how it's utilized. Uh, but when you go there, or you see pictures. It's very clear that it's an Orthodox temple, mm -hmm. and others are being allowed allowed to use it. Um, and we will talk about that when we talk about Holy Saturday morning, because something very big and important happens at that very place. But On we, Saturday morning? Yep. Yeah, you mean we, at the tomb? Yeah. But we have to get through Friday. We first. have to get through Friday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let's get through Friday. Father. Okay. So, unless you want to do that, a different flagcast. Like part two. No, I, I say we do it now. I think I think now. Okay. Uh, yeah. So royal hours in the morning, really good opportunity. If for some reason you just couldn't be there Thursday night, the themes are the same, the gospel readings are not the same, but they're very similar. And we're mystically present for what? I would say we're. This is still basically the same as the uh, matins for Holy Friday, where it's the Passion Gospels. You know, it's the we're we're, we're present at the Passion of Christ. Um, so if, if you, for some reason you just couldn't come on Thursday, Friday morning would be good. Um, then what we do at St. Vladimir's is we set up the tomb 
Uh, get ready for Vespers. This is after the Royal Hours. Mm -hmm. After the Royal Hours, which is really very beautiful service. Very, very... And it's royal not because they're, the, they belong to the Tsar, but because the royal doors for God. Yes, and they're opened at these hours uh, because the gospel is read, so the gospel is processed out through the doors. Um, there's only a few feasts that have this uh, particular um, moniker with Royal Hours. Uh, it's, the, it's Pascha, it's Nativity, it's Theophany. That's it. So, um, right. So Friday we have the royal hours. Then we have the uh, the set Vespers service. We set up the tomb and we have the Vespers service with the bringing out of Plashenitsa, which is still kind of this is the, the the actual service of the Lord being laid in into the tomb. Okay. So we're now we're Friday midday. This is about. Close to the actual. It time. is. It, we kind of we have to go forward and then uh, I mean go backwards. We can catch up. So now we're catching up. So we're right about the right time. Um, and this would be done a little later in monasteries. Probably they would get up and do the royal hours, and they might have, actually have a rest, um, and do the vespers later in the day. Then the matins in the middle of the night again. This is not practical in a parish. So we do the vespers midday. Uh, we start at one, and then we at six o'clock again. We're getting close to sundown. We do. Wait, it's a vigil because there's a liturgy Saturday morning. Well, a vigil is essentially vespers, matins, and first hour all squeezed together. In Holy Week here at the end, they get broken into pieces. Um, so the vespers is at one o'clock. Ah, uh, we already did vespers. Yeah, so and then matins. Yep, it's just matins again. A longer no, matins service. Hour. Uh, first hour is done at the. Uh, it will be done after the matins. Yes, it will be. Uh, because the royal hours are for Pascha. So the um, Matins is done. This is also called the Lamentation Service, or more popularly known as the Burial Service, because we do the, the procession around the church. Oh. <coughs> With bells. With bells, but this is... Uh, oh, this is the one one bell? This or, is no, this is the paid is one. Paid is one, where we ring, ring each bell in... in I'll try in not to mess it up. And, it's, and a, it's a very nice... The bells add a lot to this. It's very nice. The, it's dusk or it's already dark, depends on the year. Um, we're processing with the Plashenitsa around the church. It's very, very beautiful. Three times? Uh, this one is once, Pascha is three. Yeah. And then we come back in and <clears throat> finish the service. Come back in and the, probably the most famous of the prophecies uh, is read. That's the dry bones, the Ezekiel, where uh, where the, the these dry bones are found. And it's, it's we're not going to give it away here come to church. Uh, it's a very beautiful prophecy uh, from Ezekiel, then uh, an epistle, and a pretty resurrectional gospel. Not completely, but pretty resurrectional gospel is read. Um, and then that's the end of that service after the first hour. Uh, it's it's a long one, not quite as long as Thursday night. Um, probably it's more like two, two and a half hours. It's well, in for, by, at this point, in for a penny, in for a pound. I completely agree with that. You, you, and in fact, you're, you're living almost in eternity at this point. I mean, not really, but in a way. When, when you, you certainly feel like it, but right. come, when you, come Friday evening. Yeah, when you engage the, the divine services like this, really time, it doesn't disappear, but it, sees, it doesn't have the same meaning that it has the rest of the time. It's just kind of like a, an annoyance almost uh, that, 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 is, that is bothering you as you're, you're trying to live with Christ. Um, yeah, so th that's Friday. Um, the strictest fasting day, usually there would just be a meal after, after sundown. Um, you might choose to do it slightly before sundown because we have the services also more a, a heavier kind of cadence of services than you would have according to the Tipicon. But anyway, it's a strict fast day and it's a it's a pretty strict day for us. Um, this it's is black on the calendar. It's the only day that's black on the calendar. Um, but interestingly, the next day wine. Yeah, huh? Isn't that interesting? But after the liturgy. After the Not liturgy. Before. That's right. That's right. Um, this is Holy Saturday and. The, the, the Sabbath for which God prepared man. That's why he gave a Sabbath to the people of the Old Testament, for this day. Um, and to prepare them for Christ to, to rest in the tomb. But he's resting in the tomb, but he's rather busy elsewhere. Um, he is freeing the, those who have been waiting uh, for him in Shoal. And, that uh, is the mystical event uh, Saturday morning? Mm -hmm. That's right. That, that whole day, essentially. I mean... In some parishes, we haven't managed to do this, and, and I don't know that we'll do it this year, but we might. Maybe we will have, have the, the volunteers to do this. The church is kept open all the day long on Saturday. Um, and there are people there uh, who stay with the Plashenitsa, and I know, um, especially in places like 
in man mining areas or agricultural areas or places where people may not be able to get to the actual service but want to come and venerate the plush. And so this is really nice to keep the, the church open. Um, so we may do that this year. We'll look look for volunteer opportunities Don't come for that. that. That's a possibility. I, I would I wouldn't think of it. Um, but in any case, that, that is really nice so that people could come all through the day to, to venerate the plush and it's, So that's that's a real possibility. Saturday. Uh, that's Saturday. And that's where. And then we're back to church on Saturday. That's right. Evening. That's right. Um, For some. This, you know, we should tell people, though, why we bless the bread and wine. Because if, if it, it seems kind of random. It, no, it's a good story. Go ahead. Pastor. So th this is supposed to be the latest liturgy of the year. Uh, it would start very late. Uh, according to the Tipicon, I think four o'clock, something like this, in the in the evening. But you've been up all night for matins, right? If we have to think about those things, so people sleep in a little bit, get some rest. Um, and what the way it was practiced in, well, I don't even want to say the ancient church, but the older church, people would stay for liturgy. They'd partake of the divine gifts. Then the bread and wine would be blessed. People would eat the bread and wine, and immediately the reading of the Acts of the Apostles would begin in front of the Apostles. In front of they the, would be fortified by that, right? They, and that and would wine. carry them through the Paschal Vigil. Um, and so we do this differently in our days. The the service is not really too late. In some places it is, but m most places do it at kind of the usual time in the morning, because people want to go home. They want to get ready for Pascha. Maybe they got to finish coloring their eggs. Color eggs. Get the basket ready. Hopefully have a rest. Uh, and get ready for the Pascha Decorate religion. the Pascha. Right, and the Pisanki. Pisan, pisan, pisan. Um, right, but then we have the reading of the Acts of the Apostles. We're starting at 9 this year. Last year we read in 19 languages. Huh. We're, we're, we're trying to go past that this year. We're going to try to go for 20. But we need volunteers to do that, obviously. Um, so we hope that people will volunteer, and there's information on the website about how they Especially can do if you know Thai. Right, that one was not read last year. Or Mongolian. That also was not read, but I think we may have Chinese read this year. So that could be our 20th. Oh. Uh, we had some very, we had Uzbek, we had Kazakh. We had quite a few very interesting ones. So I, I hope that that will continue this year. Um, of course, French and Greek and, and Latin. Um, so, in any case, the usual you, suspects. The usual suspects. If you can do that, please do, uh, it, because this is an expression, an an important liturgical expression of the reality that Orthodox Christianity is the faith for everyone, for every language, for every every race, for every person, uh, and so uh, it's important for us to participate in this. So, beginning from nine, and you have to reserve a spot. You can't just show up at mm -hmm. at, at nine. It, it won't. Well, nine would work, but everyone wants that eleven fifteen slot. But that <laughs> that won't work. Um, so, so the last reading of the Acts of the Apostles is at 11.15? Around and that. Then, then we have the Pas Paschal Midnight Office. Midnight Office, which has to end sometime before midnight. Right, right. Because Usually there's a good cushion, and we wait. Right. And wait for the resurrection. Yeah, and wait, a little silence in church is, is not bad. Um, at the same time... Um, it also gives us a little chance to finish up a few reading the, uh, the Acts of the Apostles there. Um, the really nice thing about this Paschal uh, Midnight Office is that we get to hear the the canon from Holy Saturday again. And it's it's important enough that it's read twice. It's read on Holy Saturday, uh, on Friday evening for the Holy Saturday Matins. It's also read right before we begin Paschal, uh, the Paschal services. Uh, for priests, this is very important and moving because this is the canon, uh, the Irmos anyway, is sung at their funerals, at priests' Well, they funerals. won't hear it they won't when hear you're it dead, then. so it's good to pay attention now. Right, it, it really drives the point home. So it's, it's a really beautiful canon. The, the hymnography is really beautiful. Um, so it... Who wrote it? I'm pretty sure this is John of Damascus. I'll double check, but I'm 99% sure. Um, you're going to have to hear that if you hope to be there for Pascha, because the way the parking works, if you're not there by 11.15, it's yeah, going to be... Can forget. Well, you might find a spot often, you know, farther away, but um, it's it's difficult. And so um, it's important when people come that they uh, hearken unto the uh, voices and flashlights of the volunteers who are going to be helping to park. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Leave your basket outside. Right, do not bring it inside. Be, no, no baskets inside. There's just no way we can't do it. And move to the front of the church. Please, please, please move to the front of the church. We won't, as as we gave up on this many years ago, trying to go around the edge of the church, in a sense, it's just impossible mm -hmm. at every ode. So we just sort of stay up on the ambo, and that allows us to really utilize the, we'll pack the space. Them in. Right, yep. exactly. Okay, so uh, we, uh, we actually are going to... Uh, Assume that we're going to make it all the way to Pascha, just like happens every year. God willing. God willing, we'll make it. And then we do the hours of Pascha? What's the first thing? That first happens? thing is Matins. Right? So we do the procession. <coughs> we do the procession, and we come into the church. and we Three do times around the Correct. Church. That's right. Uh, With in, bells. Unless, uh, unless we have um, bad weather. Mm -hmm. In which case, uh, I remember one year as... Uh, Subdeacon in Jordanville, I, I think we carried the Metropolitan around the church that year. It was just <laughs> nasty weather, and we went around once. Um, Don't forget to uh, alert the send the stars out to alert the neighbors. That's right. Gonna that's be right. Bell loud bell ringing. The, the neighbors are probably watching Vladcast, but in case they're not, we will send him. I hope they do watch. Him. I think they do. A lot um, of worse ways to spend a, an hour and a half. Absolutely. And I think this is getting what time are we at here? That's oh, all right. Time is time is irrelevant. In it this is. Life. It's, it's kind of. Uh, it's like so, being with Christ. That's right. So the, um, we start with Matins, which is which has the Paschal Canon in it. It also has the hom homily of Saint John Chrysostom in it. It's just like, oh, the homily. Yeah. Ah, great. How many languages will you? Uh, just two for the homily. Just two. Okay. The gospel we will read in. Four. That's a good question. Probably four. We usually do four. Uh, I think that's kind of English, isn't... Russian, Slavonic, and uh, Greek. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, at least for now, that's all we have. Uh, next year, God willing, one of our students who's uh, in Russia will uh, be ordained a deacon, and he could do it in Coptic if we so decide. So, I don't know that we will, but we could. Yeah. So um, we don't have to do everything we think of. Obviously. No, we don't. I'm just putting that out there. Um, Right, so we read the, the, the that gospel reading in many languages, though, that's during liturgy. So we do the Matin service yeah. that has the, the St. John Chrysostom uh, in there, the, the, the really homily. beautiful homily of St. John Chrysostom on Pascha. Um, then Which we, is, no matter how late you started, come to the table, you're welcome. Everyone is welcome to the Feast of Faith. And I think that that's, it's a, it's a really beautiful message. We also will post that homily on in its entirety on the website i think on bright monday but in any case um then there's the hours are sung now in, in theory you would sing them three times the first the third and the sixth and then liturgy but in parishes that's not done it's just sung once and then we go right into liturgy mm -hmm. um and uh, both the matins and liturgy begin with the beautiful paschal verses let god arise arise that his enemies be scattered um, the liturgy is pretty much the same as always, but what's interesting is that this liturgy, uh, along with the other services, is to be done at the quickest pace of the entire year. And that's, that's not the Father Gregory rule, that's from the Tibicon. Uh, and so we don't rush, but we don't drag. Right. We're moving at a pretty good clip, and that's important because, you know, doing this all night is... People get tired, mm -hmm. uh, and they would like to get... I'm uh, tired just thinking about it. Right, well, we have to get ourselves... Uh, fired up and psychologically ready, mm -hmm. but um, in any case, it moves along at a good pace. It's the liturgy of Saint John Chrysostom, which we haven't done on a Sunday uh, mm -hmm. for almost two months now. And it is shorter than slightly shorter than Saint, Saint Basil. Basil. Mm -hmm. It is slightly shorter. With a deacon, we don't feel it so much because the priests read the those liturgical uh, those prayers while the deacon is intoning the um, the ectenias. Uh, so, but it is definitely shorter. Well, um, the anaphora is a little shorter, right? The anaphora is also a little shorter by this much. Yeah, I mean. But the thing is, I have to say, I really love those prayers of the St. Basil and Aphra. And anyone can read those. It's, they're called secret prayers. It doesn't mean secret like they're not... We don't have Gnosticism in the you church. Don't, you don't it, say it out loud. They don't say it out loud, right. Yeah. So, but um, they're really beautiful. And especially the one after the consecration of the gifts is just, just beautiful. All right. um, so where would, uh, where would an ordinary person find these prayers? In their Jordanville... Prayer book? Uh, no, they're not there, but you can Google it. Okay. I, I've, they're in several good places, you know, legitimate places, and, and it, it's very interesting and, and very beautiful. So um, I think that uh, in any case, we won't be using St. Basil again uh, huh. until probably St. Basil's. No, it will be for Nativity or the day before Nativity. In any case, it, we won't use it too much for, for a little while, um, but those prayers are beautiful. And um, yeah, 
that's that's very nice. So in any case, St. John Chrysostom Liturgy on Pascha. <clears throat> uh, and then we have the uh, Paschal break fast breakfast. We're no, we bless the, fast. the baskets. That's right, we bless the baskets. And then we break the fast. Mm -hmm. um, With we, sausage. Well, yes, and other assorted non-Lenten non foods. Yep. And actual cream in your coffee. Actual cream, yes, not almond milk. Maybe some ice cream mm -hmm. in your coffee. Why not? I like it that way. So I, I think that it's um, it's really a great opportunity for the parish family to come together, and we we hope that everybody will will come. We know that not everybody can be at the at the all night service. That's understood. It's just not you know moms with babies or you know maybe some of the older folks. It's just not possible. So we also have liturgy on Bright Monday. Every day of Bright Week 10 is just Pascha one one time after another. In fact, it's at eight. On, is on it Bright eight? Monday. Yes, it's at eight o'clock. Bring your kids. Yep, that's right. Bring the kids. It's okay um, to go to the Sunday night one, Sunday morning, yeah. the real Pascha, and of course, and many the Monday Pascha. And many people do, but also the Monday service. Um, it's really for it's an opportunity for those who couldn't be there to be there. Uh, and but wait, there's a service Sunday afternoon. afternoon. Yes, we do vespers and matins again. Paschal vespers and matins. Everything is Pascha. The whole right. week, every time we have a service, it's Pascha. And you don't even need to remember your uh, morning and evening prayers that That's way. right. You just sing the Paschal Canon. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you can time it to die so that you have your, your funeral on Pascha, it's the best. It's basically just singing Paschal Matins, last kiss, and, and away you go. It's just beautiful. What do you mean die? If, well, we're all going to die. Okay. And it, th there's a special funeral for Bright Week. We don't read the regular fun regular funeral prayers. Huh. Um, it's we sing the Paschal Canon. It's just bright, radiant. It's just okay. beautiful. Okay. Um, so most of us, uh, you know, will not die during that time. But if you were to die during that time, the service is really beautiful. Okay. Coming back Monday evening for anything? Monday evening, God willing, we'll all be at my house. Ah oh, yes. Monday so evening. Everyone's invited. We hope that you can come for the Paschal reception. It's really. Really a lot of fun. Joanna Court. Joanna Court. Tuesday morning. It's still Bright Week, and that means... It's all Bright Week. We aren't serving liturgy every day of Bright Week. That's okay. Um, we're serving, of course, Sunday, Monday, then Wednesday night, Thursday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning. So no. I give us have four. Wednesday. Don't you dare fast. Right. No fasting allowed. No fasting. Friday, no, no fasting. No, no fasting. No fasting. And this goes on for what, three weeks? No, it's not that long. Um, the, not the Wednesday after Pascha, but the next Wednesday is a fast day. Mm. But the fast days are relatively um, light. Uh, oh, not too fish strict. every. Yeah, it's who, it's fish. Who does and, this? The Russians. Yeah, yes. During this time, and, it's it. I mean, there may be a day when it's not fish or something like that. But I mean, honestly speaking, I'm not encouraging people to break the fast. But it's not really breaking the fast after all those 40 days. Um, it that tends not to be too, too strict during this Pentecost time, that time from Pascha to Pentecost. Um, and then after that, we do the Apostles' Fast. That's a different story altogether. But in any case, um, yes, there's 10 days of no, no fasting. Saturday after. Anti, is that Antipascha? Sun, Sunday. The Sunday, the Sunday, Sunday, Sunday is Antipascha. Is that Thomas? It's Thomas Sunday, yes. Thomas and, Sunday, Antipascha. Right. And, and l lest you think that that means we're against Pascha, we're not. Uh, it, it means that we do Pascha again. Uh, so if or it's anti, anti Pascha, it's Pascha again. Oh, how about the uh, anaplodosis? Wait, is that a... No, that's a Apodosis is, is, way, is way, way later, but we'll, we will do the Paschal services on that as, as well. Every day of Bright Week that we have uh, liturgy, there will be a procession, including on Thomas, and that's when we will uh, cut and distribute the Antidor, which is blessed on Pascha night. It's a special bread which is uh, blessed on Paschal night and is present at all the divine services. Not everybody can be at all the divine services, but the bread is there. And uh, at, on Thomas Sunday, we have one final Paschal procession, and then we cut the bread and distribute it as a blessing to everyone. Week old uh, bread? Paschal blessing. Yeah, it's a week old bread, but it's a very good one. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's... Maybe put the, rum in it, then it'll the vast stay, majority, uh, Yeah, the vast majority of it is not dry, actually. Really? Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, the, the outside is a little dry, but all the inside is not. So, okay. um, yeah, it's, it's... It's not like eating a rock. No, no, not at all. And people, you know, it's, it's, it's a real blessing uh, to have that on Thomas Sunday, um, especially for those maybe who were sick and couldn't get the mm -hmm. Pascha. But, yeah, it's, it's, some, it's a very nice tradition that all we right. have in the church. All right.
So that's bright week. Yeah. And and I don't think that we have. Um, I think we've run out of tape on the machine. There's not enough videotape. Yeah, yeah, and I think that, and that's not uncommon for for uh, Holy Week and Bright Week. There's just so much to say. There's so much to do. Um, the most important thing is to be at the services. So please have a look now at the schedule. It's been out for a couple of weeks. Have a look. Go to the website. Look at the schedule. See what you can do. Be there for as many services as you can be. Uh, and if you do that, you won't be sorry. You will really meet Pascha renewed uh, and very enthused and you will experience the resurrection. And confess only once. Please. Make a good list. Check it twice and make sure you don't have to come back. Please. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for the special broadcast of Pascha and Holy Week and Bright Week and the end of the fast all at St. Vladimir's. I can't wait to come back next time with Father Gregory Joyce and talk to you again about more exciting things happening at St. Vladimir Parish. Signing off. Good night.